All right, we have, uh, we're in the uh, next lesson now, 6.6, uh, .6, and I decided to just pull up the homework assignment for you, and I'll kind of do my uh, zoom in, zoom out thing, and um, it looks a little prettier, and there was a lot of drawings today, so I didn't, you know, I wanted to make them look a little nicer. <coughs> so uh, we'll do kind of what I normally do, we'll go through some of the evens here, and and work through them. So, let's kind of talk about what we're doing here today. We're kind of what we're doing is we're mixing that idea of going around in a circle. I'm looking at number two right here um, of going around in a circle with the, also the idea of Sokotoa. You know, of having a little. We're gonna have like a little right triangle within either this quadrant could be over here, um, etc. We'll be talking about. It's gonna create a certain angle in a certain quadrant and then we're going to create right triangles. Let's look at the first one. Um, let's focus really on the directions of the problem. So it says use the given point right here. I'm looking at number two here on the terminal side of angle theta. The terminal side just means the ending spot. Terminal always means ending. So it's wherever you know it, the, the angle went like this and then it stopped right here. So find, look at the point that's on this ending line right here to find the value of the trigonometric function indicated. So they want tangent. So we're looking for tangent of this situation right here. So let's kind of zoom in on this one. Okay. All right, step one. What we need to do here is drop, drop down every one of these problems you're just going to drop down a right angle and so now we've created a right triangle and the angle the main angle in this situation we're going to call theta okay this is called a reference angle remember that from before even if we went around here or whatever that we're going to have a, it'll be down here and we'll have a certain angle if it was over here then we'd have a reference angle that's our theta in this case see tangent theta so we draw a little situation here it is put the angle in there make a right triangle and then now here comes the actual math since this is the point 14 8 then this length right here is 14 and this length is 8 that's how X's and Y's work right you go to the right and up. So 14 to the right, 8 up. That creates this right triangle where this length's 14, this length's 8. The question says find the tangent of theta. Well, let's go back to Sokotoa. And we're looking for tangent. They're not asking us which one to find. They want you to find the tangent. Okay, so that's this one. And that's going to be opposite over adjacent. And the good news on this problem is we don't need to do any Pythagorean theorem or anything. We have, op from this angle, from the reference angle, this is opposite and this is adjacent. So, all that being said, tangent. Tangent theta equals 8 over 14 which you can reduce, you know, so we should divide both of them by 2 and we would get 4 sevenths. The answer to the problem is 4 sevenths. Let's see what else we got going on here. This is going to be, so we'll do, let's go right to number 4 here. Same idea, so let's make sure the directions are the same. It says use the given point on the terminal side of the angle to find the trigonometric ratio indicated. So it's same directions. Somehow this one's going to be a little more interesting. So let's look. And the reason it is is because it's cosine and I'll explain that in a second. So go a little quicker this time. We're drawing a triangle right here. And since this is 12, 3, then this is 12, this is 3. This is the reference angle right here still. That's not going to change. 
this is pretty it's pretty irrelevant that this thing went around this way instead of just doing this it's just it ended up here anyway so it doesn't really matter um, this time since we're doing cosine we need the it's Sokotoa again and for cosine it's ka so it's adjacent hypotenuse well we have adjacent it's right here from this angle this is the adjacent side this is the opposite side this is the hypotenuse if we're gonna tell people what cosine of the angle is we're gonna need this length right here because it's gonna be 12 over that adjacent over hypotenuse so I'll do a little, little work here it's gonna be 12 squared plus 3 squared equals let's call it uh, C squared I guess So that's 144 plus 9 so that's 153 so C is the square root of 153 And we can do a little better than that because 153 is 3 times 3 times 17. So it's actually 3 square root 17. You can check that if you want. 153, 3, 3, 17. So since we had a pair of 3's, I took that pair of 3's out right here as a, as a 3 but the 17 is still trapped inside. All right, so final answer on this one is going to be, since we're doing cosine, it's adjacent over hypotenuse, so the cosine of theta equals 12 over 3 square root 17, which is fine. I mean, that's not a terrible answer, but remember, we're not supposed to leave square roots in the denominator, so you'll never see this as the answer to the problem. So we're going to have to multiply top and bottom by square root of 17. And so our real final answer is going to be 12 square root of 17 over, and then since 17 times 17, or square root of 17 times square root of 17 is 17, this whole thing is 17 times 3, which is 51. And there's our crazy answer to that problem. All right, here's another one. Um, there's, there's not too much more left to talk about, but there is one important idea. So this is the first one I'm doing here that didn't take place in the first quadrant. In the first quadrant, since the x is positive, the y is positive, everything's positive. So the answers, you notice on the last two problems, I didn't talk about the sign of anything like you know positive or negative because it was just obviously all positive but now we're you know this problem here that I'm going to talk about is in the third quadrant and now we have negatives and stuff so we have to figure out and we don't really have to figure it out because I'm going to give you some rules here but um, we have to know what the final like when we look at seeking here we need to know if the final answer to that problem is going to be positive or negative we can still do everything else the same in fact let's start with that so in this problem, I'm still going to make a little right triangle. I'm just going to go upwards instead. And I'm still, this is still my basic angle right in here, that little theta. And I still have, so this is negative 11, negative 2. That means this is the length of this actual triangle right here is 11, and the length here is 2. So I'm just going to put an 11 and a 2 in there. Or even, you know, what we could do is, you could even draw the triangle off on its own just to not confuse you because all we really care about right now is this situation right here where this is the angle so in a way it's just review of you know the last few lessons where we're doing right triangle trigonometry the only difference is going to be when we're all done we have to think about the fact that it's not just a floating triangle in nowhere land it's in the third quadrant so we'll have to think about the science but right now Lengths or lengths? That's 11 length. That's 2 length. Um, it's secant. So just reviewing what that's all about. Secant is the reciprocal of cosine. So if cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, then secant is hypotenuse over adjacent. So in order to get the answer for this triangle, in order to figure out what this relationship of theta is for secant, 
I'm going to need that hypotenuse. So we're going to do we're going to do 2 squared plus 11 squared equals let's call it c squared again. This will be our little c value. That's 4 plus 121 equals c squared. That's 125. And then the square root of 125 is actually 5 root 5. So we have our hypotenuse, we have the adjacent, remember this is the key angle, it came from right here, this is the, I'm just, I just redrew it here so we'd see just, you know, focusing on the triangle here. And so if this is our theta, our angle, this would be opposite, this would be adjacent, this is hypotenuse. And secant is hypotenuse over adjacent because it's the reciprocal of cosine. I'm kind of reviewing everything, putting it all together here, okay? So in this problem, the secant of theta would be 5 root 5 over 11. That's hypotenuse, that's adjacent. Hypotenuse, adjacent. Hypotenuse, adjacent. The only thing left, and this is kind of the, the last part of this video, is, is talking about, you know, it, it is that this is, if this was just a triangle floating in space, then obviously the answer would just be that. I mean, it would just be that to the secant right here, right? Over here on the right. But we still have to deal with the fact that there were negatives and stuff in this problem. So let me start with, I'm just gonna go right to it on what we're trying to do here. Um, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna give you, it's a little trick, it's very famous, and I'll even give you a little device to remember it. Um, and that is, in the first quadrant, we are, I talked about this earlier, all things are positive. Because your x is positive, your y is positive, so all things are going to be positive. Whether it's sine, cosine, tangent, cosecant, secant, cotangent, all those things, everything's positive. So whatever answer you end up with when you do your little triangle and you do your ratio here and you get your answer, it's going to be positive if it was in the first quadrant. In the second quadrant, sine is positive. And we'll, we'll eventually talk about exactly why, but for today, let's, you know, maybe I'll even add some things in class, but um, right now, let's just kind of know these, this little rule, and we'll go with that, and then we'll slowly build up to why that all works the way it does. In the third quadrant, tangent is positive. In the fourth quadrant, cosine is positive. So I'm going around in a circle here, first quadrant, second quadrant, third quadrant, fourth quadrant. And when I say sine is positive, I mean cosine and tangent are negative. When I say tangent's positive here, I mean sine and cosine are negative. And when I say cosine's positive here, I mean sine and tangent are negative. Uh, let me say that again. Everything's positive here. Only sine is positive here, only tangent's positive here, and only cosine's positive here. Notice I'm ignoring cosecant, secant, and cotangent because whatever, you know, like for example on this problem, cosine and secant, yes, this is the reciprocal of this, but they have the same qualities as far as their sine goes. As far as positive or negative, it's the same because this doesn't have anything to do with changing signs of cosine. The definition of secant is just to flip over cosine. So you don't really need to memorize anything other than this because when you see secant, you should think cosine. So let's finish this problem. We are in the third quadrant for this problem. Only tangent is positive. Therefore, cosine is negative. Therefore, secant is negative. So the real answer to this problem is negative that. One more, quickly. It's going to be quicker so you can see that this isn't that big a deal. Okay, So 
I mean, right now that we, we just, you know, talked about the quadrants and what signs they are. So right off the bat, we are going to have to remember this again. Ant, Sally, Tickles, Cannibals. That's uh, my teacher from, what, 25, 20, uh, I don't know how many years, 27 years ago, whatever, whenever I was a junior in high school. Um, that was what, what I learned. I actually Googled it, and it, it it's out there. Like, it's a thing. I thought she completely made it up. But uh, you'll also hear uh, all students take calculus. That's probably more typical. Um, but if you really want to remember it, Aunt Sally tickles cannibals. First quadrant, second quadrant. So know that you're going around this way. This is always the beginning of that little phrase. Aunt Sally tickles cannibals. And uh, remember, it means all Things are positive in the first quadrant. Only sine is positive here. Only tangent's positive here. Only cosine's positive here. So this is a problem where they're asking for tangent. We're in the second quadrant. The answer to this problem is going to be negative. Like you might as well just lock it in. The answer equals negative something. So you got that part straight. All you really need to now focus on is the triangle itself. And this triangle is kind of goofy because it's super tall and skinny. So it's kind of hard for me to draw on here. So I will do what I did last time and we'll just kind of blow it up a little bit here this is going to be a 2 this is going to be a 19 this is our key angle right here All right, we call it our reference angle it's the angle it's always the angle from the horizontal to the terminal side that that makes the theta which is right here it's here it's here Notice I didn't even put negative 2 in there because I'm now just thinking of it as a triangle which has all positive lengths. I already know what sign the thing's going to be. It's up here. It's going to be negative because of Aunt Sally. Sign is positive. Everything else is negative. And other than that, this problem's done because it's tangent and we don't need the hypotenuse for tangent because tangent is TOA. And TOA is opposite adjacent and that's 19 over 2. That's it. That's it for today. The, uh, the, the problems below here are all review problems. I'm not saying they're all easy. You're definitely going to need to spend some time on this. Really think it through what's going on here. Understanding is going to be um, a lot better than just trying to memorize stuff. Um, because we are, like next week, we're going to build up to something a little bigger. So take your time on this assignment. If you can get through this assignment you know, and really get what's going on, you're, you're ready to go. Okay. So um, work hard, be nice, see you soon.